Welcome back. Worry point for corporate balance sheets escalating with the currency crisis. Joining me now to discuss the rising risk for India Inc. Avinash Gupta, Senior Director, Deloitte. Thanks very much, Avinash, for coming by. My first question, how worried should India Inc. be with all the developments that we are seeing? I think, um, I think there are two ways to look at it from an India Inc. perspective. I think uh, I couldn't follow in all the commentary which you discussed before the break, but I think... Uh, if you break up India Inc. into two buckets, really, one is effectively the large corporates, I guess, and maybe one is the, you know, the, the mid-size and smaller corporates. I think the worries would be different in both buckets. I think the larger corporates, you know, with who have uh, ratings, who have much larger balance sheets, who have much larger financial flexibility, possibly more di diversified also in terms of their banking uh, relationships and funding sources. I guess they would be possibly be lesser impacted and able to manage the situation better. But if you look at you know the wider mid-market and the smaller corporate world who really are looking at a slowing economy, lower margins, possibly lesser financial, much lesser financial flexibility and you know having much lesser working capital flexibility as well which is hurting everybody across the board. I think they will be much more impacted and should be much more worried as to what the options are as you know the months go by. What could be the options for this wider category of Inash? I think, you know, the options have always been very limited for, you know, in many ways for both sets, if the both buckets, if I can look at it that way. I think some of the corporates, I think as your commentary said earlier, have been over the past years, been trying to at least borrow and dollarize their borrowings, which is no bad thing. If you've got exports, if you run a very uh, well-managed company, You've got clarity as to you how your cash flows are going to be. There's no harm in effectively taking dollar exposure and reducing your cost of borrowings. But on the other hand, there are lots of people who also did take dollar borrowings and really possibly did not hedge, as you said, half of them really haven't hedged. Or also at the same time, with the global, uh, you know, global slowdown, the external markets also are slowing down. They clearly have an issue. So I think it's not only an issue in terms of what you have taken and how do you repay what you have taken, but also with the slowdown in terms of the increase in the credit spreads itself, which also you touched upon, you know, even refinancing is going to be very, very difficult. You know, the banking system itself has raised its spreads. They themselves have an issue in terms of getting financing. So in many ways, it's a lot of double whammy effectively at the same time. So the options could be very limited, but the options really are then to effectively come back to home base and borrow in your home currency, which possibly they could do and over a period of time repay what they have taken in terms of foreign currency. From what I hear you say, Avinash, it looks like we could see severe stress then and we could even possibly see some flame outs. I think, uh, and I think, you know, the severe stress, you need to, uh, you, you need to kind of compound that with effectively what we've been also picking up in the market and there's lots of public commentary on it in terms of already the stress which is there in the system in terms of the slowdown, the, uh, the stress which is there possibly in the banking system as well in terms of, you know, balance sheets not growing and NP is growing as well. So, compound with all of that, yeah, there is, there is, a, it, there is a recipe to be had, looked at which could lead to a lot of, lot of issues coming to boil at the same time. Um, and there is no clear picture or a clear solution which one can see in the near future in terms of either the currency or in terms of business and markets going forward as well. We've got 20 odd billion dollars are coming up for redemption in just one year. H how seriously do we run the risk of seeing some defaults there? I think, uh, you know, I think we've had defaults in the past as well, you know, so, you know, a lot of the foreign currency convertible bonds or the ECBs have had either to be restructured or folks have defaulted. People have taken a, taken a write-off on those amounts as well. And I think, uh, and I, I don't know, the $20 billion number may be actually low because I think the short-term maturity is actually higher than the $20 billion as well. A lot of them may get refinanced and, you know, uh, maybe it's $20 billion is net of that, the number which you are saying. But that itself is a fairly chunky number and I think the point you're making is well made that, you know, there could be a couple of situations where people will be pained, may have to take, uh, you know, a haircut or may have to draw the maturity out and there could be severe restructuring on that front. All right, Avinash, thank you very much for joining us and sharing your perspective. We will, of course, keep bringing you more details on how India Inc. is concerned and what's the kind of stress that it might have to go through very soon.